Sherina Blinken, what about Sherina Abu Akleh? She was murdered by Israeli forces. Right, CNN just agreed to this. These are your two greatest allies in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia and Again, Israel. They uh, have murdered American journalists and there have been absolutely no repercussions. And you're sitting up here talking about the freedom of press and democracy. The United States is denying sovereignty to tens of millions of people around the world with draconian sanctions for electing leaders that you do not like. Why is there no accountability for Israel or Saudi Arabia for murdering journalists? It is one of the most dangerous places in the world to be a journalist in Palestine. I deplore the loss of uh, Shereen. Um, she was a remarkable journalist, an American citizen, uh, as you all know. And there too, we are determined to follow the facts and get to the truth the facts of what happened. Found Secretary Blinken, no, they have not. Been, no, they, I'm respect. sorry, with respect, they have conclusive. not yet been established. Yes, that has. For, no, they have not. If we were looking for an independent, credible investigation, when that investigation happens, we will follow the facts wherever they lead. It's, it's uh, as straightforward as that. That has not yet happened, but it's something that we very much want to see happen. And we'll have time after Thank the you. panel, of course, Thank to talk you. more about that. That was journalist Abby Martin at the Summit of the Americas back in June. Abby Martin is the host and producer of The Empire Files. And with President Biden's trip to Saudi Arabia and Israel complete, she joins us now to weigh in on the latest out of the Middle East. Welcome back to Rising, Abby. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Mm. What are your impressions of Biden's recent trip to the Middle East? Well, it's funny, just weeks after that question that I directed toward Blinken, you know, about the two greatest allies that the U.S. empire has, which are just egregious human rights abusers, you know, on the heels of this failed summit where Biden's administration failed to even garner support um, to basically reinstate the Monroe Doctrine in Latin America while bemoaning the human rights abuses of places like Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Cuba. It's just such a stark contradiction <laughs> to then have, you know, Biden go and again, like everything in Biden's administration, it was just an abysmal failure. I mean, the whole trip was a huge political risk, especially with all the pressure on Biden saying that Saudi Arabia was a pariah state, saying that he wasn't going to meet with Salman. And then, of course, you know, he kisses the ring or shall I say, bumps the fist and it just caused just an uproar. I mean, this huge political calculation because of his failed ratings that actually puts him lower than Trump at this point in his administration with gas prices astronomically high, inflation super high, and it just failed. I mean, at the end of the day, Saudi basically came out with all the concessions and Biden got nothing. Abby, um, I, first of all, I just have to say awesome questioning. Really cool to see that. One thing that really stood out to me was when Blinken says, you know, we're waiting on the credible, credible investigation. So when it came to Saudi Arabia and Jamal Khashoggi, we had Turkey that went in and, and did an investigation. Of course, it was in their country. So but they were doing the investigation. But who is doing the credible investigation of this murder of this journalist in Israel um, and in Palestine? Where what is the are they are, so is Israel investigating themselves? In this situation, as they, where's the... as they always do. Yeah, as they always do. And what's so funny, I mean, kind of what was unspoken there is basically calling CNN essentially discredited um, because they, along with AP and several other news organizations, had already done independent investigations with forensic analysts, um, audio analysts and analyzed eight, you know, all of the video reports with the eight eyewitnesses. So it was just super conclusive at that point. And then as we saw, of course, weeks later, the United States released their own um, declaration that, yes, it was the IDF who fired the bullet that killed Shireen Abu Akhle, But uh, amazingly, according to the State Department, it, no, this wasn't intentional. Of course, Israel would never intentionally kill a journalist. Right. This is actually because of the confusion, you mm -hmm. know, just lending to that discredited narrative that it was because of Palestinians, armed Palestinians that just caused confusion and just Israeli soldiers just accidentally killed this journalist. We know that that's already completely false. Well, Blinken needed to portray it as if there's some ambiguity, right? Because then then he, he thinks he could persuade some people that, well, the U.S. government is, you know, what can we say? We don't know for sure what happened. Uh, and, you know, a kind of ambiguity that benefits our government in its 
right? And it's moral flexibility, and it's wildly careening from one moment to the next about we, Saudi Arabia should be a pariah state. No, wait, actually, we have to beg them for help. You know, the, the changing, oh, we're doing this for humanitarian reasons, this for real politic reasons. We're ignoring these humanitarian. Like, it's, a, it's a foreign policy that makes no sense, but has become, I think, the, almost the hallmark and signature um, uh, uh, condition of the Biden administration. And it's becoming just so obvious and glaring. Um, I mean, just the fact that, you know, the media's coverage. I mean, look at the the vast majority of the corporate media that was actually up in arms about the fist bump and Jamal Khashoggi and how, you know, he met with Salman, even though he said he was not going to, and how he didn't really do anything to hold Saudi Arabia accountable for killing this Washington Post journalist because this Washington Post journalist was one of their own, right? Even though he wasn't an American citizen, it was just this gross, grotesque thing that happened. He was dismembered in the embassy. And I mean, of course, Biden did nothing, even though he said he was gonna do something on the campaign trail. But look at the stark, uh, basically difference in coverage from Shireen Abu Akhla's mm -hmm. murder by Israeli forces and the Jamal Khashoggi um, assassination. I mean, it, it's really amazing how little the press talked about Biden's trip to Israel and these contradictions and these human rights abuses. And instead, um, it was all focused on Jamal Khashoggi. Now, this was an American citizen, Shireen Abu Akhle, a revered Al Jazeera journalist who was targeted. I feel the evidence points to the fact that she was directly targeted and killed. This isn't the first time that Israel has done this. In fact, this is a long line um, of direct targeting and killing of journalists and just an egregious violation of international law. But, you know, as Blinken so clearly stated, you know, this is, <laughs> this is, uh, they're just going to be wishy washy. They're just going to basically uh, have false equivocations of, you know, their adversaries and just remind us, no. Israel and Saudi Arabia are, are necessary allies. And that's exactly what Biden said going into Saudi Arabia. He basically made this big pitch saying, no, we need to do this trip um, because we need to normalize relations with Saudi Arabia. I mean, as if they're not already normalized, basically what right. came out of it, um, no gas prices are not gonna become lower. No Saudi's not gonna do anything to help that crisis. Instead, Biden actually said that they're thinking of selling offensive weaponry now to Saudi Arabia, which I don't know what the difference is between defensive and offensive in terms of the war in Yemen, mm -hmm. but it's just absolutely incredible what a failure this was. And then when you go to Israel, all Biden did was basically expand Trump's policies, the Abram Accords, um, what Jared Kushner, you know, put into place that actually was personally profiting from his foundation, um, this normalization, this peace deal that they herald as some sort of monumental thing when really all it is is just more weapons deals between authoritarian governments. And Biden goes over there proclaiming he's a proud Zionist. Um, it, it was just so insane on so many levels that these are the two greatest allies of the United States. And at the same time, we claim to be the moral arbiter of human rights and democracy in the world. I always say that Israel, you know, with uh, politicians constantly bragging about the special relationship between Israel and the United States, Israel is like America's wife and we kind mm -hmm. of appear in public with her as a, as a partner. And Saudi Arabia is like America's side piece where we don't actually tout that relationship, but we have a very close relationship, but we're in bed with her also. And I think we could see this, like in, in the difference, as you pointed out, Abby, uh, between the reporting on Khashoggi's uh, murder and the murder of uh, Shireen Abu Akhle. You know, it's funny. Biden actually did say one good thing. He actually, I think this was off script because I can't imagine that his handlers would have allowed him to say this <laughs> scripted. But he basically, during a pitch, I, I think it was with the Palestinian Authority, he, he actually said that his Irish Catholic upbringing, yes. like it, it, similar to the resistance of Palestinians against the <laughs> occupation, it was like, whoa, whoa, yeah. you're actually comparing this to the British occupation? Great job, Biden. But of yeah, course, seriously. just totally com total capitulation to Israel. You know, what's I think a, another big failure that came out of this is the fact that just days after Biden returns, Putin actually goes and meets with uh, Tehran. Um, and, you know, it really just is an indication of how failed these sanctions, the Western sanctions have been mm -hmm. not only on Russia, not only in, on Iran, but also the entire global south, where all of these countries that the U.S. wanted to cripple with sanctions, especially, you know, in light of the war in Ukraine, have basically converged and are working together outside of the dictates of Western capitalism. And that is just a huge indictment of the failure of Biden's policies as well.
I wish there was more discussion in the world about just, you know, with when it comes to American foreign policy, just the basic discussion of should we be selling our weapons to anyone? I mean, I, I just I do not understand this. I don't understand how our country can develop weapons for our own defense, for our own security. And yet we then allow our government to sell them to foreign governments to be used often against us and not even just to foreign governments, but they give them to groups and you know not even not even organized uh government groups right and they and then they end up being used against us and that should be more of a i think a larger discussion whether or not people agree with our relationship with israel or saudi arabia or any of that right it's, we happened, don't even with get into the more. it's happened with isis right. how right. many right. more times does this have to happen as, as of as of battalion yeah yeah the, the fact that hillary clinton is out there saying we want ukraine to be the afghanistan model i think she just oh be God. a real oh my God. God. like well, it just baffles my mind that every day people can wake up in this country and think that this is okay to funnel billions of dollars and weapons to these groups around the world while we are denying um, basic human rights to people at home. It's just absolutely mind boggling. Yeah, look what we do to our own. Look what we do to journalists here in this country too, right? I mean, we yeah, put them in jail. Assange. Right. Julian, exactly. Yeah. Free Assange. Abby, given. Yeah, free Assange. Given that, um, who's someone you've also talked a lot about, Abby, so thank you for doing that. But also given that the um, human rights abuses of Israel are so much less highlighted than the ones of Saudi Arabia are, and given that you and Mike Preisner made this great documentary called Gaza Fights for Freedom, can you just tell viewers uh, and listeners what kinds of, the, the ways that Israel has targeted um, press, members of the press in the past, than that because this is not an isolated incident with Shireen Abu Akleh. I mean, I can just speak to the Great March of Return. There was the UN investigation of uh, the 2019 peaceful protests where thousands of Palestinians peacefully resisted against the blockade, the medieval siege that's been implemented that denies them of basic human rights, dignity, mobility, um, counts their caloric intake, denies them travel to do cancer treatments and stuff like that um these people were mowed down mercilessly 62 people mowed down in one day one day and the press just made it seem like oh just palestinians died you know using the passive voice um with that ongoing massacre that happened over the course of several months there was disabled people that the un found were directly targeted children that were directly targeted medics that were directly targeted. This includes um, Razan al-Najjar, um, medics that have testified that they were just hit with barrages of bullets the second that they would leave the ambulance to try to aid people in need, war crime after war crime. And with that, um, two journalists were actually targeted and killed, as well as several others were targeted. Luckily, they survived, but they are permanently disabled. Um, and this is just a long line. I mean, this is just the the latest instance, of course, Shireen Abu Akleh, that's why I'm not surprised. It is just certainly egregious that an American citizen, you know, aside from being a revered Palestinian journalist, the fact that an American citizen can be targeted and killed by this staunch US ally and just no repercussions, nothing at all. It's just continued subsidization of this apartheid state and funneling of weapons. And let's just face it, Biden touting the fact that they got, what, $300 million in aid that Trump cut sadistically, they wouldn't need that aid. If the U.S. stopped subsidizing this apartheid state, Israel would have to negotiate peace. But because of the U.S.'s running cover perpetually for the state of Israel, that is why they're able to get away with this. Mm. And I just hope that the pressure continues to mount. Um, BDS continues to build steam and we will finally see uh, a peace negotiation in our lifetime, but I'm not holding my breath for Biden to oversee that. Well, Abby Martin, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks, Abby. And we'll be back with more Rising right after these messages.